Hello and welcome to another video by myself, Chris, from Surveyor on a Budget. In um, tonight's video, I'm going to look at how I go about finding some of these bargains and how to flip them. Um, it's going to be quite a brief guide um, because it's not an exact science. Um, so I'm going to briefly cover over what is flipping. If you hear that term and you're not familiar with what it means, um, some of the tools to uh, find the players, uh, what to look for, strategy, you know, and that kind of thing. If you are new to Surreal and you're looking at this video thinking, hmm, I could actually probably make a bit of money on here, um, you can sign up using my link below. It'll also be in the description underneath as well, which is www.surreal.com. When you sign up there, you'll get an initial 10 common cards, which you can use to enter the Rookie League with. Once you've signed five cards from the new card auctions, you will then get a free card, which you can sell or you can use it in your game weeks if it suits you. So, um, looking at the, the video itself, um, what is flipping? I mean, basically flipping is buying something for a low price and selling it for another price, you know, and making a profit. It's really that simple. Um, on today, that's basically what I've looked to do from, from the beginning, um, is buy players um, at cheap prices and try to sell them on. Um, which probably reflects as to why this, you know, I haven't necessarily won many cards because a lot of the time, if my cards are getting to a higher value, I then look to sell them on. Um, I should maybe hang on to them and work towards, you know, winning cards. But I find, you know, I can make a fair amount of profit in a week and, uh, you know, and enhance the gallery that way. Um, the tools that I use for finding the players, the primary one is, I'm going to just bring this up here, is uh, Surreal Data. Now, I've actually got my account sitting on here just now. And the reason I've got it sat on here just now is just to show this astronomical figure that I've had from sales. Um, 4.82 ETH. Now, that's far from entire profit because you've got to look at what has been spent on the market um, and also auctions, but then you look at the, the value of the gallery and things like that as well. But I've spent the better part of five ETH, or I've, I've brought in the better part of five ETH from, uh, from trading. And uh, it's, it's a, you know, a process. Sometimes it could be very quick. Sometimes it could be a slightly longer term. You know, a player could be moseying on along and then all of a sudden hit a run of forum, price skyrockets. And then it's up to you to decide whether you're going to keep that player and keep working towards the points or do you take the profit and reinvest? I've always taken the profit and reinvested. So if I could sell a player for a fee and then maybe bring in two players, to me, that makes a little bit more sense to my strategy. Um, but everyone's different. Everyone's got their own strategy. That's kind of always been mine. Um, there was a period of time where I did upgrade um, the players that I would put into my weekly uh, SO5s. Um, but on the whole, as I've said in previous videos in the last few days, every single card at my club is available for sale. Um, I find you cannot be too precious with your players um, unless you've got an you know, infinite budget. Um, where you can you can hold players for fun. Um, for me, I can't. I want to move them on all the time. So the primary thing I'm going to do in Surreal Data, I'll show you some of the exact searches that I do, um, and I'll show you how I go about them. So Scouts and Player Finder. Now, when this comes up, um, at the moment, we're coming towards the end of the K-League season, uh, end of the J-League season, and the the end of the MLS season. So I'm not actually going to look at any of those players. There are ways and means that you could flip players there, or you might want to buy some players and store them away over the winter and sell them, you know, in the pre-season time. Uh, but I'm not going to look at doing that in this particular video. Um, what I am going to look at is when I filter by the leagues, I am going to take off all leagues and I'm just going to look at Champion Europe and Challenger Europe. Um, I find that these are the two leagues, or uh, two SO5 leagues, that uh, people really kind of are attracted towards. So I'm going to look at midfielders. Um, no particular reason, just because um, it's it's you know does bring up quite a good selection, to be honest. Now, when I'm searching for these, I'm kind of looking for ones that I'm only really looking at the last five on these. Now, um, when I'm looking at maybe players for my SO5s and I'm trying to avoid DNPs and things like that, I might look over the last 15. But I'm just going to look at the last five on this. And that's where I've done it recently, especially over the last three, four weeks. And that's where I've made probably, you know, some of the best profits that I have made. I've got some examples of those, which I'll come to. Now, what I do on this, I just expand this to be a maximum, expand that to be a maximum, expand that to the end. Um, but now there's multiple ways you could do it. You could look for players that are sitting with a low 
SO5 average, like 35, and then the hope, you know, that maybe they get towards the 45. It could be somebody that's been a sub for three games, um, but the last two games they've played. So you might want to speculate that they're going to play the next three games, increase their average, therefore increase their price. Um, but what I'm going to do in this particular one is I'm going to find ones that are hovering just under the, the 50 map. So I'm going to look at ones um, from 46 up to 100. Percentage of games played, I want them to have played all of the last five. Now, again, you can, ch you can change that. You can maybe look for ones that have only played three games or two games or even one game to find the players that have maybe got an injury, maybe coming back from injury, um, have been suspended, you know, COVID. They could be out for, you know, three game periods for that. Um, so I'm, but for the purposes of this search, I'm just going to look at this. Um, game started, what I'll do is I'll bring it up to a Midland. Now, obviously, for five games, it's 20% means they'll have played those games. So by searching for 67, if you search for 80, sometimes it doesn't bring up the players that are on 80%. So I'm going to put players that have started, and that's going to work out as the equivalent of having started four games. You can bring that down to under 60, which would be three games, bring it down to under 40, which would be, you know, and so on and so on and so on. So I'm not going to look at limiteds on this video. I'm going to look at rares. I'm, I'm not going to look at average price. And there's a reason for that. And I'll come to that when I, when I do the search. I'm just going to look at best market price. Now, I'm going to bring this up for um, 0 0.05. You could do this for any budget. You could put that down as low as you like. You could put it up as high as you like. The lower you go, the fewer players you're going to find. The higher you go, the more players you're going to find. But I'll go with a, a 0 0.05, which at the moment is about 100 and, 130 quid. Um, which is maybe a bit high for some budgets that are maybe watching this video. As I say, you can bring that down and look at different players. So that's actually brought up 19 players matching that criteria. Now, the way that Serea data sorts them is it sorts them by the last 15 average. So you may see uh, some players with lower uh, last fives, as you can actually just see on this top line here. You've got Stefan Hodum uh, from Altach. Uh, he's only got a 49 uh, average for the last five, but uh, 50 for the last 15. But then you can look along to, here we go. Um, I think it was a uh, powerlifter that was uh, mocking my pronunciation of names. But we've got Kjell Pantaleo um, from Krasnodar. You can see that his last five are 56, but his last 15 are 48, which is why they order them this way. There is another section, which you'll maybe see at the bottom, depending on what it's brought up. That sometimes uh, some of the leads, some of the players that have maybe just been promoted with clubs like Cambour or uh, Go Ahead Eagles or players from the Austrian leagues that haven't been in European competitions um, or haven't been at previous SO5 clubs, um, they may not show as having a last 15 and they appear at the very bottom of the, of, of the screen. So when we scroll down these, um, you'll see it shows a number at the top, which if you hover over it, it, obviously it kind of obscures it, but the last five average uh, for Stefan Hodum is 0 0.04, and the best price on the market at the moment is 0 0.05. Now, there's a gap there of 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01, sorry. So you can have a look at that and see if there's a way that you can maybe negotiate a price down, um, because that, that gap there is effectively where you can maybe profit into. Um, to be honest, with um, the score there being fairly average, um, and it's consistent with last uh, 15, I don't know how much profit they would necessarily be there. That looks like a steady eddy. You know, it's a, a, 50 play, a, a player scoring 50 most of the times. Same with Lucas Schiff's, um, you know, as price 0 0.05 is the, that'll be a best market price this time. You see how it's different from a, a last a three day average. And this one shows the best market price. The one I'm going to have a quick look at here is Cal uh, Pantaleo. Um, I'm probably butchering it as we know, um, but you know, is what it is. Um, I'll come back to having a look at him, but I'm going to just scroll down and see if there's any others that catch my attention. Um, not overly so. Um, I did look at Leandro Lopez earlier on, so I may have a quick look at him to show you um, what I mean. Um, if I'm going right to the bottom, here we go. There's a couple of players who don't have last five. So we've got Tobias Kynes, 49 average. You can see that last 15 is not applicable. That's just because he's not played 15 games within the, the scoring format. Um, and that, that explains as to why that there isn't one there. You could see something else here like Jordi Bruin. Um, last 50 of, uh, sorry, last five of 50 and last 15 of 38. Now there's a good chance that means he's been a substitute in the past um, or just a low scorer. Same with De uh, Damian Mark. Um, and then we've got Daniel Offenbacher, 
Point zero three. That's that's a cheap price for a player, so averaging fifty two. Um, that could be one that I maybe come back to have a look at in a moment. But what I would do is if I scroll back up to the top here and I will look at uh, Cal Pantaleo. Now, if I click on him, it'll open up in a separate tab and I'll bring up his details. Now, um, one of the reasons I'm going to look at him is because the last five, uh, sorry, the, the best market price is what's coming up at the top. Now, that means you can see that there's been no sale in the last three days, but the last seven days was 50, uh, 0 0.051. So that's below what the best offer is. Now, there's a chance if I go into uh, Surrey and have a little look here, um, Cal oh, there he is. There's a chance that the person selling this card, and I feel as though I'm, um, no, I'm not right on this occasion, but yeah, there's one that is, you know, is lower than where he's been. Um, now, when I look at his description, it'll show you the last five scores. Now, there's the reason why he's a little bit lower than what he was seven days ago, is that um, he went from an 82, which would have bumped his price up, and scored a 39, which would have caused his price to maybe come down a little bit. Um, now, the way I look at these, when I look at them, is I want to see what this figure at the end here on the on the left is. Now, in his uh, game, because that game is going to drop off after he plays one more game. Now, a 54 score is quite, you know, that's a pretty decent score. Um, he's going to have to score at least the 54 to maintain this average. Now, if that average, uh, you know, if he scores, say, 30, that average is going to drop. For every five points in the game, that's going to drop, basically, give or take. So if he was to only score 30, that average is going to come down closer towards the 50 mark. So all of a sudden, that average isn't quite as impressive when a 56 to a, you know, to a, a 51, you you know, you may lose a bit of, uh, a bit of value there. Um, so that might not be one that I look at at the moment. That might be one that I bookmark and keep an eye on him for the next few weeks and see how he does. Um, ideally, you know, looking at maybe when this 82 come, is going to come off in a few weeks' time and see how his average is sitting there, and that might be who I invest in at that point. The other one I'm going to look at, which was the card at the bottom, um, oops, that's the wrong window. This is the right window, which was uh, Daniel Offenbacher. Um there we go, Daniel Offenbacher. We don't have a last five day, uh, last fifteen day on him, so let's go and have a look. Uh, best market price and three day average are quite similar. Um, now let's have a look at Daniel. Close that one off. Um, so you can see his price has been fairly steady, so there might not be an awful lot of room for manoeuvring in this one. Um, but what we can do is we can look at his SO five scores. And uh, yeah, he's got an 82 that's going to drop off from his last five. So that 82 is going to mean that if, that, if he doesn't hit a high, high score of 82 or more, his average is going to plummet uh, to maybe in the mid 40s. And you probably see his price come down. Now, you want to buy when they're on the way to go up or on their way up as opposed to where they've potentially sat at a peak price. So that would be an indication here that that's maybe one that sat at a peak price. Now, there was one there that I... Um, who did I see now? Um, I'll maybe change it to Defenders and have a look there. There was one in particular that I was looking at last night, and I just want to see if I can find him again. Um, just change that to Defenders is all I've done there. And... Um, Again, scroll down, you can see, you know, the highest out of 15 of, you know, 55 there. Um, but the prices are both matching. So, again, that could be a sign that, you know, what, what has he been setting it? You know, he's been set up as far as point, uh, 0 0.051. Now, that might indicate he's had a, a couple of low games. Yeah, he has done. Um, he has got a 71 to drop off. So, that might well be one that, again, we might look to uh, avoid that. Um Neto, probably because of his age. Marcus Suttner was one that I have had uh, a really good profit on twice in the last uh, week or so. Um, now, there is one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Now, this, this is an ideal example. Um, Mohamed uh, Halamaya from Beershot. Now, Beershot are obviously struggling. However, his score for the last five is pretty good. Um you can see a huge disparity between his two prices. The last three days, he's averaging 0 0.031, but the best market price is 0 0.048. So we're going to have a little investigation on him. Click on some. You can see his price has been increasing. Um, a one-month average, 0 0.022, then to 2.8, then to 3.0, then to 3.1.
Um, obviously, people are going to try and you know squeeze out uh, as much profit as they can. I think they're being a bit optimistic there, um, especially in the last three days. He's been selling for 0 0.031. However, now the great thing about this one is um, last five games or the last three, he's got good green scores at, at you know at seventy eight. It's pretty good. But look at these two here. These two are going to have to drop off. Now, should he have a couple of halfway decent games where he's scoring, you know, a 50 or more, those two drop off and all of a sudden that 52 average is going to be looking more like a 55, 56 average. And um, that's where, again, you're going to see a significant increase. So I'm going to have another uh, a look on something else to show you where I would then look at him. Um, what I would do is I'll show you just quickly. Let's have a quick look and see into there. Um, if there's any auctions on the go, because if there is, you'll tend to find that the auctions will probably go closer to the uh, last five. There isn't, there isn't, um, and there's not actually that many of them on the market at the moment. But what you can also look at is, uh, he, oh, this is another one of the beer shop players where there isn't a 2021 card. There's a couple like that um, that I've, I've noticed um, don't have 2021 cards. So that plays into it as well because the scarcity is there. Um, so you might want to see if you can negotiate one of these guys, bring it down to 0 0.031, maybe even 0 0.035, because as we say, we're speculating on him getting one good game, boosting up average right up, therefore boosting his price up. Um, but what I would then look to do with that is I might have a look in sofa score. Oh, yep, yeah, I was looking at the uh, Scotland scores. That was a hell of a game. If my voice is slightly more croaky than normal, there's a reason. Um, but what I'll do there is do a wee search. It brings him up. Uh, we can click on some. Now, the great thing about Surrey Data is you'll find a lot more um, underneath the surface than you'll see um, otherwise. So, he started the season on the bench, if we look here. Um, he's had uh, a couple of games on the bench. He's also been on the bench for Algeria. And uh, But when we look here, he had this game in, uh, in August when they took a bit of a thrashing, 5-2. And he had a poor performance there. But then you look down here, 7-1, 7.3, 6.9, even in defeat, and 7.1. So if I look over here, we'll see a um, bit more detail on him. He's played uh, eight games and started six. Um, he's played an average of 71 minutes per game. Um, Attacking-wise, he's not done an awful lot. He is getting about one shot per game. Um, so that might be a sign that, you know, if he's getting about one shot per game, then, you know, if he turns one of them into goal, grand. Going down to the passing, though, we're seeing he's got an assist. He's getting a lot of touches in the game. Um, he is attempting, you know, not attempting many crosses for a wide player, which is a bit, a bit crazy. Um, if you look here, you'll see his heat map. He's, he's obviously the right back. He is um, playing right up the wing. So to see that he's not got many crosses, I mean, that might reflect on why Beershot aren't doing that great. Um, they're, they're not getting the crosses into the box. Um, but you can see down here, you know, he's not got any errors leading to goals, even errors leading to shots. And when it comes to duels, he's winning about 61% of the duels. Um, he is losing a fair bit of possession, but fullbacks do. Um, so you have got that side of it, you know, that could pull him down. But for me, that's that's a decent pickup at that sort of a price. You know, if you can get him at his three-day average, there or thereabouts, you might want to keep an eye on him, see if there's any... Um, you know, any auctions do come up for him um, when they bring out 2021 cards for him because he's clearly still at the club. Why he's not got one, I don't know. Um, but you could possibly find one of those. Um, you can then also look at him in a transfer market to see if there's any other news about him. Um, the way that I've just looked in it in uh, Sofa Score, uh, it's not brought him up, but uh, never mind. You can see it in Sofa Score. Um, you're seeing all the, the details of his games there. You're seeing as much detail as you can because you're getting his heat map for all, you know, you can look at the games individually and look at all the heat maps. So that would be a player that I would maybe look at picking up. If you could pick him up in the 0 .3, uh, 0 0.3 market and try and sell him on for 0 .04, 0 .05, uh, 0.45, and that, you know, you could do that before the next game period um, because guys will start to look, you know, that have maybe sold players to, to generate a, a, a team that's going to play in the internationals. And then they're going to start to look, right, OK, now I need to go and look at building the team back again for, for the weekend. That sounds crazy, but there are a lot of people who panic by in the uh, international windows. Um, they do sell players off. The other way that you can find players, um, and this is purely by trial and error, um, you'd have to go in and look at some of the players. Um, the one player there that I did see a second ago is Cleanput. He was one that I was having a look at, Jules Van Cleanput. 
I was having a wee nosy at him. Um, he does have a, a lower score to drop off in a, a, a two game periods. So I'll, I'm going to keep a close eye on him because that will help his average. He's sitting on a 56 as it is. But what you may want to do is you have a look at them. Um, you can then see where guys have maybe won him as a reward. Um, if you scroll down through the cards, um, you will eventually come to some of the 2021 cards with, that have been won as rewards. There we go. Look, people have won them as rewards. Now, these guys are obviously putting them into training squads or are actually using them because the percentage is going up. But if you see one that's maybe sat with a, still with a 5% chance on it, you may want to see if the guy's got Discord or you could send him a cheeky offer um, and see if there's a way that they might want to sell them. On reward days, um, once the cards have all cleared, sometimes guys just want to cash them in. Um, so we quite often on a, say, a Friday night or a Tuesday night, you may well find some bargains where people are like, you know what, I've got this card, doesn't fit in my plans, um, I've already got, you know, 20 defenders, I don't need another one, and they bung them up at below market price to try and get a quick sale. And if you can cash in on that quick sale, you can then look to trade them on. I've done that quite a few times in the last little while because I've caught and done that that's not a bad plan because people do want, if I had the card, I'd probably look to try and cash it in at, you know, the, the bottom end to try and reinvest in other things that I did want. Um, so that would be another way of looking at it. Now, what I'm going to do is um, just sort of to click back into the, the trades. I, what I did was I actually put a few of my recent trades on. Um, now there's five of them here. You can go on. Um, so their data and click through, you can find these, um, these I, I went and found them all myself so I could exactly, um, you know, detail how many days I had them and things like that. But these are an example, obviously the top one, Eric Martel, I found him through the research, he was sitting on a 57 average for an under 23, um, he had a very low score to drop off, and all he needed to do was have a half decent game, he did better than that, he scored in the six days, uh, I think he had an assist, and um, his price went from 0 0.09 and I sold him for 0 0.0197. He's now selling for the better part of 0 0.025 or 26, um, which means if I'd have held on, I'd got an extra 130 quid. Um, but I can't complain. I made 227 quid on him. It's actually paid. I'm going to wait tomorrow for, uh, for four days and uh, he's paid for it. And, um, you know, I, I think that that is remarkable. So there's allowing me, you know, to be able to have gone and just booked a hotel for three nights for me, Louise and the young lads um, by buying and selling a player over the course of five days. It's, uh, you know, great. Uh, Marcus Sittner bought for 0 0.03 and that was just the other day and I sold him for 0 0.045. Now, what actually happened with him was I already had one. I had one that I'd bought for about 0 0.02 a few weeks ago. Um, I had him listed at 0 0.045 and he just sold out the blue. Um, so I bought another one as soon as somebody put one up cheap on the market and I sold them within hours. Um, and again, there we go, 41 quid profit on that. That doesn't seem like a lot, but when the card only costs you, you know, 70 quid and you're making a 41 quid profit on it, hard to, hard to, to grumble at that. Mark Van, uh, van der Marl um, bought for 0 0.03, sold for 0 0.039, 23 quid profit. But that was again within a day. Um, I'm not going to get 23 quid <laughs> return on anything from a bank, um, you know, and if you if you sit and you actually look at it, you know, if I had a bigger budget, if I had more time, I could probably buy a lot more of these cards and do the same thing over and over. Um, Benji Kakanovic, I bought him, I actually genuinely bought him for my team, um, but he had a couple of good games and he was sold set within seven days. Um, I bought him for 0 0.041 and I sold him for 0 0.07, 91 quid profit um, in just seven days. And then I had Jordi Vandlerberg, just to put a slightly longer term on it, 0 0.024, and I sold him for 0 0.035, 26 quid profit. Um, so it's, sometimes you might have to wait. Sometimes you could you can make those profits quite quickly. Um, I'm just going to show you a, a deal that I've got here. And now I'm going to have an offer on the table here for somebody. Um, there's been quite a few offers. Okay, I'm going to give you a live, a live video of me accepting an offer. So I bought uh, Ragnar uh, Oratman again um, on, uh, I want to say it was Thursday. It was the day I did the video with Russell. And um, I bought him for 0 .0, uh, 0 0.06, I bought him for. Um, I've got him listed at 0 0.08 as maybe being a bit optimistic. But you know what? I've had him for two days and I have, um, I rejected an offer earlier. I could potentially reject that still in the hope that he comes back. The cheapest on the market was 0 0.078. But let's go and have a quick look. And I'm going to show you exactly how much I paid for him so we can, we're seeing a real time. Uh, my gallery. 
He is a forward. I could probably, again, I could probably hold on to him and get more before the game week. There we go. 0 0.06 is exactly what I paid for him. Um, and if you want to see more details, if you don't know how to do that, you can click on the cards. You can look at the history there. There we go. I bought him from somebody who'd got him as a reward. I bought him for 0 0.06. And um, I'm about to sell him for 0 0.071 almost, which um, is about 30 quid profit. He's never played a game for me. And I actually can't believe my luck that I've got one here that I can live sell. I'm going to accept that. I'll reinvest in a couple of cards and uh, submit. Bang, I've sold them. I can't believe my luck. <laughs> that's actually, that's not even made up. That's not even, you know, uh, it's, I did reject that one before the video started, but bang, there we go. There's a flip for you. I am almost 20%. I'm 0 0.06 to 0 0.07, say it's 0 0.071. It's just shy of a 20% profit on a card I've not used. I've just bought and I've sold them on. I love Sarir. I really, really love Sarir. Um, <laughs> it's just wild. I mean, I mean, earlier today, um, I'd sold um, uh, Julio Furch. I'm getting offers for players, you know, that I've bought. I did buy him to flip. I haven't sold him yet. He is going to be playing in midweek. He played today for uh, Kazakhstan. He only scored a 40. So that's going to affect his average, price, his average score at the moment. But... I'm not too concerned about that. He's under 23. Um, people, will, you know, some people will actually look at it and look, okay, for CSKA, he's actually having some really good scores. He plays as an attack in mid. He was actually playing uh, up top um, for Kazakhstan today. They lost 2-0 to Bosnia. No harm in that. They're a great team. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get my money on him. Julio Furch, I sold him earlier today, um, 0 0.071 as well. So there's two sales. Now that was a trade for a card that I'd paid 0 0.05 for. So again, if you want to work that back, that's 0 0.021 profit. Um, on today's market, you know, I think we're what 2600. So you're looking over 50, probably nearly 60 quid profit from a, a, a trade and then a sale. Wherever it comes from, it's, it enhances your balance. And I, I can't believe my luck that I actually had a live one go through. There we go. That's accepted. If I refresh that now, my balance my ETH balance is going to jump up to 0 0.0137 and uh, 360 quid. You've got to remember, I started Serer with £300. I've got all my players in my gallery. I've withdrawn £525. I've got a cash balance of that. And I've still got a gallery, if this is updated, uh, which it may well have done. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time. 0 0.021. So my gallery, as it stands, is worth about point, uh, including the cash, uh, 1.34, that would be. Um, I I can't grumble. I can't grumble in the least. Um, so yeah, I can't actually be my luck that I got a live example there, which is just awesome. I'm uh, so pleased with that. Um, and again, it's not a card I've even used. I've just bought them and sold them. Um, it can be done. You've just got to do your research. You've got to find those cards. And um, there are other means of doing it. As I said, as I was doing the search, you can search for ones that are maybe playing below um, their best average and look that maybe they're, you know, have a look at the reasons for that. That's why I, you know, have transfer market open. I have sofa score open. I can then go and look. I can do a search on Twitter to see if I can find any in injury information. I could do a search on Google News. There's so many ways you can try and find out a little bit of information about these players. Um, every single one of these cards, you can find a way to make a profit on. Um, you could do it unlimited. Um, it's more sales to get the bigger profit, but it's all it's all percentage based. You know, um, ten percent is ten percent. You know, um, sometimes you know, obviously ten percent of a bigger number. You know, it's it's it ultimately percentage wise, it's the same. Um, so I hope that's been educational. Um, it's been great for me because I've made money making this video, which is fantastic. Uh, thanks to everybody who subscribed to the YouTube channel. Um, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, it helps me with the numbers on there and it helps me um, keep producing content. Um, if you've got ideas for upcoming videos, I will have a look at those. Um, you can send me those on Twitter, um, either on my DMs, which are always open. If you want to discuss any factor of the video, feel free to. Um, you could also send me an email, which you could do at uh, Chris, uh, which is K R I S, at serreronabudget.com. That'll come straight through to me. Um, or you can send them on my DMs on Twitter at serreronabudget. As I say, if you're new to Serre, um, if you've made it through this video and you thought to yourself, I've actually just seen a guy make you know, a decent chunk of money um, from, you know, buying a player and selling them a couple of days later um, and you want to give it a go, 
www.sarayonabudget.com. Um, you can sign up there. As I say, you'll get your 10 common cards, which you can use in the Rookie League. And then when you buy five cards from the new card auctions, you'll get a free card, which you can sell or you can use in your, your game weeks. So um, with that, thank you very, very much. Um, I won't have any videos for the next few days. It'll probably be at best Wednesday night, but more likely Thursday night. I'll try and get something done scouting-wise um, ahead of the weekend next week. And um, yeah, thanks so much for your time, guys. Um, I hope it's been educational, and I will speak to you all again soon. Take care.